At some point in your boat restoration, everything's got to go. In 2014, when I bought the boat, I thought maybe I would be keeping most of the interior intact. And I would only be upgrading the systems kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. But it became real obvious as soon as I started crawling around the boat and really looking at the systems that almost everything was outdated. Some of it was damaged. Some of it really wasn't in very good condition. And I came to the conclusion that virtually all the systems were going to have to be taken out of the boat. First to be pulled out were the tanks inside the boat. The water tank, the holding tank, the large diesel fuel tank that's underneath the cockpit. Each one of these was its own individual nightmare trying to pull out of the boat. And in fact, some of them were already damaged and literally came apart in pieces as they were brought out of the boat. This is not anything inherent to the construction of the Alban 27. It just has to do with dealing with a boat that's about 40 years old. Things deteriorate and they break down over time. Okay, today uh, I'm working on the head and the V-berth. And the plan is to uh, take off all the trim. Uh, I just pulled out the water tank uh, and the waste tank. Disgusting job. Uh, previous owner left me a nice present which was a full holding tank and uh, it's just disgusting so in the process of pulling that out I'm having to go back and kinda clean and bleach everything just be my tools and everything because there's a mess everywhere and uh, but now we're getting to the point where I'm taking off the trim at some point I started working on the engine the boat was a runner when I bought it, and my first step was to try and get the engine started and see what condition it was in. Coming out good? Yeah, clear water. Is smoke going away? No. Okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, good. Okay. What do you think? It stops every once in a while, the water. Yeah, it's okay. It's your propeller. It's got to force the water through. So it won't come out like a spigot all the time. It, it pushes it out. The engine's very cool to touch. I want to try and put the propeller in gear and see what happens, okay? The great news was that the engine was a runner. It, it did run. I began to consider restoring or rebuilding the engine just to kind of ensure its reliability in the future. And very quickly, I realized that this particular engine was kind of rare and there weren't a lot of parts available to rebuild it. One of the engines that was installed in an Albin 27 was what's called a Nissan LD28. This is essentially a Nissan car engine that was marinized for marine purposes. They're very popular in Australia and in Asia and they were used a little bit in the 1980s for new boat construction. The problem is, sometime after the middle 80s, they stopped making the Nissan marinized engines. And the parts, specifically the parts that turn the car engine into a marinized diesel engine, well, those parts no longer became available. On close inspection of my engine, it became real obvious that this thing, at a minimum, probably needed a new manifold. And it might have needed some other parts. But those parts simply aren't available. And to have them made custom one-off was really cost prohibitive. Because no matter what you do to try and rebuild an old engine like this, it's still an old rare engine. And there's not a lot of parts available to fix this thing down the line. There's a lot better technology in modern diesel engines that are out there for long-term cruising on a boat. So I made the decision, this engine's got to go. The systems in the boat, well, they got to go too. The headliner, the wood, all the components and junk that was inside the boat, well, that's got to come out. And I want to start from a clean slate and build the boat back 
the way that I would like it. After removing the tanks, it was time to get the engine out of the boat. This is not an easy job. The pilot house sits directly over most of the engine compartment. The engine compartment in the boat is actually down inside the hull, about amidships. And the pilot house extends over that compartment. In order to connect to the top of the engine to pull it out of the boat, well, the pilot house has to be moved out of the way. Luckily, on an Alban 27, fresh from the factory, the pilot house was just screwed into the deck. I know. It's not exactly the way that I would put the boat together, but that's how they did it back in the day. Just six or seven number eight screws held that pilot house to the deck of the boat. After we pulled those out, it was a simple matter of literally picking up the pilot house and moving it forward several inches to gain access to the engine compartment. The Nissan LD28 diesel engine weighs about 520 pounds. How do you get that thing out of the boat? At this time, in the old boat yard, at my old house where I worked on the boat, well, I didn't have a crane, I didn't have the go hoist lift, I had no forklift, I had no way to get this engine out of the boat. I thought about this long and hard. I thought I had a clever idea, putting a two-ton portable engine hoist up inside the cockpit of the boat, and I'd hoist it out myself and then bring it over to the side and lower it back down to the ground. The Alban 27 on a trailer is approximately eight feet high at deck height. I took apart the two ton engine hoist, brought it up into the cockpit, put it back together again, tried to lift the engine out of the boat and quickly realized that due to the positioning of the feet of the engine hoist, well, I really couldn't get a stable platform to raise this thing up. So I had to take apart the engine hoist, take it back out of the boat, and come up with a new plan. My new idea was to hire a tow truck wrecker company. A tow truck with a crane on it that would come to my house to help me pull the engine out of the boat. A tow truck with a suitable boom crane? Well, that'll run you about $75 for a half hour to an hour. Once the engine was disconnected from the boat, it was a simple matter of hooking up the tow truck to the engine and lifting it free. I gotta say, this was probably the easiest part of the whole project. Afterwards, it was time to climb into the bilge and start scrubbing the engine room. This is probably one of the most rewarding projects that I've done because now the engine room is a completely blank slate. Next episode, I'll talk about how I removed and repaired the giant diesel fuel tank hidden under the cockpit. This week's question comes from Miss Maria Munoz from San Diego, California. And Miss Munoz would like to know, if I have a question or I want to contact you, how do I do that? I don't have a YouTube account. This is a good question. If you're interested in contacting me or asking a question and you don't have a YouTube account, simply navigate to the Motor City Boat Works website or the Motor City Boat Works YouTube channel and in the show description there'll be a link. If you like these videos please subscribe and click the like button. These videos would not be possible without your support. Thank you.